Good evening everyone. I was hoping that I would show you Project Euler Problem 25 today. Unfortunately my uh, desktop recording software decided to have a hiccup and so I can't. However, let's uh, press on and look at the next problem in the list of ones that I was going to cover and that's problem number 80 which is the digital expansion of irrational square roots. Uh, for this one I did do a little bit of uh, look ahead and found a big digit library which uh, lets me do basically arbitrary precision floating point because I wasn't quite sure how to do that in Haskell without an additional library. Uh, I will put a link in the description for that. Uh, I did have to change uh, a couple of imports because they're the old style import char and import ra uh, ratio which obviously need to be data.char and data.ratio. Uh, but with that all loaded uh, it does look like I will be able to do nice long arbitrary precision square roots which are important for us for this problem. So in brief this problem is dealing with square roots of the first 100 natural numbers which uh, are irrational. So that's the square roots that aren't integers themselves. Uh, natural numbers I believe start from 1 so we are looking at the square roots from 1 to 100 <clears throat> 1 to 100 of uh, uh, and we only want the ones that aren't integer so let's uh, let's first of all try to find all of those so let's get ourselves a file and import big digit 04 which is I believe the name uh, big float 4 see I can remember everything can't I so big float 4 is our convenient little library that will get us what we want and uh, what we want to be able to do is first of all calculate the square root of a number. Uh, I'm going to call my function square root tick because the normal square root function takes a floating point number and returns a floating point number but we're going to be feeding it the natural numbers so square root tick is going to take an int and produce a big num. I believe that's what big float produces, let me just double check, it produces a big float. You'd think I'd have got that as well, wouldn't you? So, square root tick is going to take n and it's going to return the square root of from integer n as a big float. I believe that will do the trick. Let's just test that. Name does not match module name. Saw big float, expected big float 4. Tell you what, let's remove the 4, open the file, and uh, yep, it is without the 4. Unfortunately, the 4 comes from the file name from the download, but I'm sure you guys will be able to cope. Okay. So couldn't match from integer with actual type int in uh, that. So we'll say that square root takes an integer then, because that's easier. OK, and if we test that with uh, the value 2, then we get a ginormous value that does indeed look like it starts with the square root of 2. So the first thing that we want to do is calculate the square roots of all of the numbers from 1 to 100 which will be a list of big floats and it will be uh, the map of square root over 1 to 100. Now some of those obviously are irrational and some of them are rational so just printing them out like this is never going to work. So what we want to do is for the, we want to get rid of the rational ones first, and the first rational one is 1. How are we going to get rid of that? Well, we could check whether or not floor of the value is equal to the value. So is rational is going to take a big float and return a bool, and uh, it will be because we know that the uh, the rational square roots are whole numbers they are integers 
So in fact, let's let's name this usefully. Let's call it is integer of n is going to be equal to from integer n tick is equal to n where n tick is floor of n. It's probably a good start. So let's reload. What can't I do? No instance for real flack of big float in instance floor. Let's pull up my big float library and just see whether or not there's any convenient function I can use for this. Uh, do 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 do. Read big floats. Abscess. Fractional. Um, floating. No, I don't think so. Um, that's disappointing. Convert signed and unsigned. Make and unmakes. This is quite annoying, but never mind. Uh, search for floor. <laughs> so that's the only instance of floor in here. Let's have a quick look for integer. From integer isn't going to help us. From rational isn't going to help us. Aha! bn is integer tells you whether a big float represents a whole number. That'll do what we want if we've got it. We have. So let's use that. So is integer is bn is integer. Problem solved. Not in scope bn is integer. Well we'll find out momentarily. Uh, load uh, no, so bn is integer isn't given to us. Thanks, big float. So what's that used in that we can use outside? m is zero, drop em. Mantissa. Do, do, do. Truncate. Do we get to use that anywhere? BN to integer. That's used in exponentiation, but nothing. You see, it's a big problem. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cheat a little bit. And I'm also going to export bn is integer from the module because I'm feeling lazy. Reload and we're good to go. So we have the square roots and uh, what we want is the irrational roots is filter on not is integer of the square roots. Can we not do that? Expected type big float dot big float actual type is big float. So we can't steal bn is integer from that. This is really getting irritating now. Um, we have an instance of ratio, I think. Do we? We have an instance of num, which gets us plus, minus, and times negation, blah, blah, blah. We have an instance of fractional. What does fractional give us? Can we? use fractional. 
gives us division, it gives us reciprocal, and it gives us from rational. Great. Um, there's got to be a way to do this. Um, top tip of the day guys actually think about what you're doing before you do it okay um, the square root of 100 is 10 which means that uh, anything less than 100 is going to be 9 point something or smaller which means that if it's fractional then the second character if we show it will be a dot there we go. There's a really nasty way to do it. Big float to bool is integer of n is true if and only if show n pling pling zero will be the digit so one will be the dot is equal to a dot. Can we do that? No, I need to change that equals to a double colon. And there we go, it shuts up a little bit. So, reload. And that's good. Irrational roots. Let's just get the length of that. Pling, pling, index too large. Of course, because 1 is present and the square root of 1. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so let's put show n into n tick, and let's say n tick is show n. Uh, so length of n. No. Um, so n tick is show n. N tick tick is tail of n tick. which if it is null we know that we only had one element so uh, n tick tick has to be equal to no sorry uh, not null n tick tick yes that'll work because we know that 99 and one don't work so let's try that one eight <laughs> only eight seems a little odd um, not convinced about that but anyway map uh, take mm, 20 dotted with show over the irrational roots Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, oh, of course, it's integer if it's null. That's more like it. So that's a whole bunch of the irrational ones. And there are 90 of them. That seems more plausible. So, to solve this question, we need to calculate the totals of the digital sums of the first 100 decimal digits for all the irrational square roots. So uh, first 100 digits is going to take a big float and return a string and first 100 of n, well it doesn't matter, will be the tail of the tail of the show and then it'll be the take 100 of that. Sorry. There we go. So let's reload again and let's map uh, first one, first hundred over the irrational roots. And oddly enough, that gets us a bunch of values. So the digital sum of a string S 
uh, is going to be what's it going to be digital sum of C of an empty string is zero the digital sum of a character and some more characters is from enum of the character minus from enum of a zero plus the digital sum of the rest parse error in pattern because once again I've forgotten my brackets and it goes away so reload let's map digital sum dot first hundred oops there we go so that's telling us that the digital sum of the first hundred uh, decimal places of the square root of 2 is 481 does that match up it doesn't so we've done something wrong it should have been 475 let's uh, hmm let's just take the head of the irrational roots and pass that through first hundred four one four two one three five six blah 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 four one four two one three five six two three seven mumble 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 seems right and the length of that is a hundred so why is the digital sum of that 481 and not 475 first 100 decimal digits I wonder let's be a little cheeky here and change how first hundred works instead of take 100 of tail dot tail dot show let's show uh, filter not equal to dot and so we're taking the first hundred digits including what goes before the decimal place let's try that uh, the digital sum of the first hundred oh, that's 475 okay so we've met the uh, requirements there so finally we can go back to our map which looks like that and now is the time to look away if you are going to try and do this for yourself because I'm about to sum all of those as is asked for the total of the digital sums of the first 100 decimal digits for all the irrational square roots and then I'm going to try and plug it in and make sure that I've got the right answer so stop looking now I have an answer and I'm feeding it in and well hey it worked so uh, there we go that's everything you need to use that expression to get the answer to problem 80 of Project Euler I'm not gonna say it's pretty but it does work bye bye <laughs>